is tired while my heart's on fire Treated a love like a recipe Follow you and you're feeding me But I won't fraction my heart Good God, I pierce your side Cause I don't guard my eyes Ten percent of my This master cannot save you Your minds or your brakes won't buy your sins You can break the alabaster on a podcast Deconstruct the light till none can be let in Self-discovery can only get you so far, baby Justified me. You tore down strong walls just to find the home. Check one, two, check.
and feasting with the king who left his throne for me and throned upon my praises and clothed in majesty he is holy and i am underdressed i'm feasting with the king who left his throne for me forgiveness isn't fair but it's my Can you give me a set here? Oh, my check is. Morning, Denver Christian Middle School. Let's stand and worship.
How's everybody doing? Good. Good? Welcome to chapel. You ready to have some fun? Yeah. All right, listen up. I got a very, this is a very serious topic. Um, you know, we'll have some fun with it, but this one's, this one's important, y'all. What I'm getting ready to talk to you about today is something that can change the course of how you do your life. And I know you're in middle school, you're not thinking about life ahead of tomorrow, probably, but remember this lesson. And it's about instructions. Instructions are one of the most important aspects of our lives. And not just you, your parents, your teachers, everyone who can hear the sound of my voice right now. Instructions. They are as simple as messing up a recipe all the way to not obeying the traffic laws and someone losing their life. Today, unfortunately, some youth will go home and their mom or dad won't be there because someone didn't simply follow instructions. This is very, very important. You are hard pressed to go anywhere in your life where there's not an instruction. Even if you're out in the woods in no man's land by yourself, there's still instructions that you need to follow to keep safety even in those places. There is no such thing as a prosperity of life without following instructions. But we have the wrong idea about instructions. And I want to debunk something for you really quick. We've misused the word freedom. I'll give you an example. Before I became a Christian, you know what one of my excuses was? I would join the church and become a Christian and all that, but I like my freedom. What I was really saying is, I don't like to follow instructions. And instructions aren't to take away your joy. Actually, instructions keep you joyful. They keep you safe. You get some of your first instructions when you're born. Crawl here. Hey, don't crawl over there. Don't touch that. Don't put that in your mouth. Instructions. And then the instructions begin to change as you get a little bit older. Look both ways before you cross the street. Be careful around strangers instructions. These are all to keep you safe, not to hurt you. Your parents are not giving you instructions because they want to see you suffer. Your teachers, your principal is not giving you instructions because they want to make it harder for you. They're giving you instructions to support you and to help you and to guide you. And as you get older, you, you know, instructions of what to do with your food and what to do with this and what to do with that. Let me give you something about me that is a little embarrassing, but I'm going to go ahead and share it anyway. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. And we keep, this, we keep this between us, okay? I am horrible at putting together furniture. I absolutely, I, I am very careful how I use the word hate. I hate assembling furniture. I'm horrible at it. But do you know why I'm horrible at it? Because I don't like to take the time to read the instructions. I just kind of look at the thing and see a couple holes there. I see a couple screws here. Those look like they go there and I just get busy. And it never comes out well. To give you a real simple example, my family, you know, we just moved here to Lakewood and, and I'm putting together some furniture. Again, I hate doing it, but have to do it. And I put together these two end tables. <laughs> I really thought I did a good job. And uh, my wife came home and I heard the question that you never want to hear. Did you follow the instructions? <laughs> you never want to hear this question. And the reason you never want to hear this question, because this question always is always the implication that you did something wrong. So she comes in. I, I got the end table. The end table is a little it's a little wobbly. Right. But but hey, it, it works. Right. End table is a little wobbly. And I got even like a little centerpiece on there to kind of cover up my. My mistakes, I was, I, was, I was hoping it covered it up. It, it, it really didn't. She walks in and she looks at it. And I can tell something was wrong because when you show somebody something you've done and they pause, it's not good. <laughs> and she looks at it and then she gives me the, um, hmm. <laughs> when they don't even say a word, it's not good. <laughs> I'm super proud, right? Like, hey, baby, look what I did. I put it together. And then they walk around it. Did you, um, 
Did you follow the instructions? <laughs> I can't cook either. That's my other secret. <laughs> you know the worst feeling you can do or the worst thing you can hear when you cook something for somebody? They take the first bite, right? Mm. Did you follow the instructions? So obviously you're saying it's not good. This is not a question you want to ever be asked. Because what it means is you could have done it correctly. Ignorance is different than rebellion. Ignorance is I just didn't know how and no one told me. That's different. You can't get away with ignorance when your teacher's been teaching for 30 minutes on how to do something. You can't say, well, I didn't know unless you asked or you know, came to that teacher. The worst thing you can be told when you hand in your homework is, did you follow the instructions? You, you, you never want to hear this question, y'all, ever. You never want to hear this question because everything in life comes with an instruction. Have you ever, anybody here ever have a phone or an iWatch or a video game system? a TV, any of those things. You know what comes in the box? Instructions. How many of you read the instructions to your phone? No, you just pull it out. It's got a couple apps. And then what's crazy is I'll see somebody do something with their phone and go, whoa, the phone does that? I ain't read the instructions. I call, I check voicemail, I text, a little social media here and there, I'm good. Your phone probably does much more than you can even imagine. Do you know? Uh, parents and people who are old enough teachers your car came with a set of instructions. It's in the glove compartment But you know what you didn't do? Jump in your car. Wait, wait, everybody hold on read the instruction book before we take off No, you jumped in the car you turned the ignition and you took off When you got your TV and you hung it up on the wall, you know what you probably didn't do right, Before we watch anything. Nope family. Nope. put the popcorn down before we watch anything everybody else read the instruction booklet We have a habit of not reading instructions but what if, what if, let's just, what if, what if life had an instruction booklet? An instruction booklet. Something that would tell me how to do life, something that would guide me in how to do life when things are broken. Some people say, well, it's just a book. It's not a book, 66 books, written by 40 different authors over the course of a thousand years, all saying the same things in different time places, people who never met each other, and yet, here we are. There is nothing like this. There is nothing ever created even close to it. This book predicts 250 years before Jesus' birth what he would look like and how he would be executed. And you know what's crazy? Crucifixion wasn't even normalized when it was written that he would be crucified. How did they know he'd be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver 250 years before his birth? Because God prepared us with an instruction book. If you're sad, if you're going through something, if you're stressed, anybody ever been stressed? You're doing life wrong. You're not reading the instructions. You're either taking upon too much. You're worried about something. The Bible says, don't worry for anything. Be anxious for nothing. I got you. I'll take care of you. I'll never leave. I'll never forsake you. Anything you need, bring it to me. Cast all your cares upon me. Take my yoke. My burden is light. The instructions. But just like that TV, just like that phone, we don't take the time to read it. And we try to do life by how we see other people do life. Well, it looks like opening up the phone and just starting it is easy. It looks like just doing life is easy, but you will always struggle unless you follow the instructions. Now, will it be easy? No, absolutely not. Can't preach that to you because that's not the truth. But the truth is this, there's an answer. There's a way. You don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to do it alone. And you know the other instruction in here? It tells us, it says, be a community. You're not created to do things by yourself. You're created to work with each other. Do you know what God's commandments are? 
Let's, let's give me a guess. What do you think God's commandments are? Instructions. A commandment is an instruction that God has given you and me to live life. So here's my challenge to you. I want you to consider one day and try not to follow it. Now, I'm not saying do this. I'm saying consider this. I want you to consider right now. How would you live one day? Start your day off without following any instructions. Think about what that would look like. First of all, your alarm would keep going off because the instruction is to hit it to stop it to, you know, stop it from banging, right? Couldn't brush your teeth. Well, that's an instruction. Putting the toothpaste on the toothpaste. Oh, well, no, you couldn't do the, couldn't wash your face. Oh, no, no, you can't do that because there's an instruction to get the towel wet and then wipe your face. Oh, oh no, you can't do that. Probably couldn't have breakfast. Couldn't, you know, get the spoon out of the cabinet and do it. No, 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 you can't do that. What would you do trying to live a life without following instructions? It is just as ridiculous as that sounds. It is also just as ridiculous to try to live life without the instruction. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for this reminder of how important it is to follow the instructions that you've given us for our life. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your word, God, that no matter what we go through in life, even as sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, we can always be drawn back to you for our strength, for our support, for our help. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you remind each and every person under the sound of my voice what the instructions of life are. Help us to draw closer to you because through these instructions we find the prosperity of life. And that doesn't just mean money, that means peace, joy, happiness, vision. Everything comes from the instructions that you've given us. And as we leave this place, but never ever from your presence, I pray that everybody is reminded of the instructions, even on the natural level. Give us the courage and remind us how important it is to follow the instructions of our classes, to follow the instructions of our mothers and our fathers and our grandparents. Remind us that they're not trying to harm us. Remind us that it is actually rebellion to go against the instructions that we've been given. And they're trying to help us. And we give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with me. Now, we got to do this one loud because this is the instruction. Right? So the um, high schoolers are still shook by how loud you get. And we got a group of high schoolers right outside the hall. I say we rattle the walls today. You with me on that? Yeah. All right. You know how we do it. You know how it goes. You ready? Yes. You ready? Yes. I couldn't hear you. My bad. You ready? Yes. All right. Here we go. DC, how are we called to love our God? D.C., how are we called to love our neighbors? Never forget these instructions. There are no commandments greater than these. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful day. What's that? Yeah, you sure can.